not the type of response that you want after two of your coaches get fired earlier in the morning. And yeah, just definitely you do not want that. But welcome back to TTP Sports, everyone. Before we get into this, Flyers lost their ninth in a row to the Colorado Avalanche. The most important thing you can do is hit that subscribe button. We just got over the 400 sub count, so I'm very grateful for you people doing that. So if you are a new viewer to the channel, definitely recommend hitting that sub button for all the latest Philadelphia sports news recaps and events. It's a great time or a miserable time, depending on the outcome. And if you're a long-time viewer, current viewer of the channel, I am grateful for you being here that long and looking forward for it down the road. So let's continue to grow this thing. Now let's get it to 500 subs. We got a new goal. Get the 500 subs. So definitely hit that sub button and let's move on from there. So the Flyers, they lose their ninth game in a row to the Colorado Avalanche by a score of 7-5. to So back-to-back -back games where the Flyers allow seven goals at home. And just, I don't, I'm not sure if I want to say this is, you know, as the planes fly by for some goddamn reason. Uh, I don't know if I want to say embarrassing. I guess you could kind of say it's embarrassing. It's like, I really don't know how to describe that because, honest to God, because I was in the press box today, so getting to, you know, view this thing from above, seeing everything at hand, this was a very sloppy game on both sides. Even Colorado, they weren't playing their best day, but at the end of the day, Colorado has more of the high-end talent, and the high-end talent came out and, you know, performed better than the Flyers' talent did, and I think that's what comes to it. Both goaltenders on both sides were not good. Martin Jones probably had one of his worst starts in a Flyers uniform to date to start this season, so there's that. And just that first period in general, seven goals in total between both teams. Flyers get on the board first. Colorado responds with four unanswered goals. And then the Flyers, they come back with two goals at the end of the period to make it four to three going into the second intermission. I'm just like, my goodness, calm down. Calm down, please. Like, can we just have a, a non-stressful period? Come on. Come on. Just a non-stressful period. So you got Mike Yo. His uh, first game as interim head coach for the Philadelphia Flyers. He has Daryl Williams on the bench along with him. He's the guy that's coaching the power play for the time being. And Ian LaPerriere, he was called up as an emergency assistant coach. So I I'm not sure if he's going to be on the road trip to uh, this week. I didn't sound like Mike Yo said that, that he was like transcribing to that in the press conference. He really didn't think it was alluding to any that type of deal. So I think it's just Lappy for this game. And he probably will go back down to Lehigh Valley after tonight. So just continues to be the same old, same old. And when a game where you finally score above three goals for the first time since October, the end of October, I think the 27th or the 28th, it was that game it won in Edmonton. It's been, the, it's been a long time since this team scored above three goals. You score five goals in this game, and you still don't come out to the victory because you were terrible defensively, and your goaltender was not good tonight. And the longer and longer this streak continues the longer and longer this bad play continues to happen it's now starting to affect your defense and your goaltenders because on a game where you get the offense finally your defense and goaltending just doesn't show up so it just becomes one of those things that's starting to you know spiral out of control into different places in this team to where okay the power play looked better tonight you got a goal well i think actually a couple of power play goals if i'm not mistaken but just the penalty kill wasn't good. Colorado was just dynamic tonight on the power play. Like every every chance they got on the power play, it was just everything was lethal, to say the least. Because you know Colorado, they are a highly gifted team. They are a highly offensive team, and they have a lot of creative, talented players on that team. Kale McCarr, man, that fourth that fourth goal in the fourth, uh, first period that they scored was just man, going end to end. Beating Ivan Provorov one on one, putting one by Jones, making it four to one at that point, and just going over this game in general. The Flyers get on the board early, a good shift by the uh, Claude Giroux line, and Mike Yo did shift up the lines a little bit. The first line was Sean Gatorier, Oscar Lindblom, and Travis Konechny. So that was a line that was like, you know, they were a thing a couple of years ago. So he, maybe he's trying to reunite that. They maybe get those guys some uh, energy and consistency, maybe so, you know some chemistry going there. Then you got. Claude Giroux with JVR and Morgan Frost. Those guys had some chances tonight. Your third line was Kevin Hayes, Cam Atkinson, and Scott Lawton. And in your fourth line was Patrick Brown, Zach McEwen, and Max Willman. So 
a little bit of a different lineup tonight. The defense was, was basically the same. You had Provorov with Braun. You had Ristolainen with Sandheim, and you had Sealer with Yandel. So basically nothing changed there personnel-wise. So you get on the board first. Morgan Frost, Flyers force a turnover. Rasmus Ristolainen pushing into the offensive zone. Morgan Frost comes up with the puck, hands it over to Claude Giroux, who's wide open for a one-timer, puts it by the goaltender, becomes a 1-0 lead for the Flyers. Not that long later, Flyers actually go on a power play. There were some nice passes on this play, but Claude Giroux, he slips on a, trying to receive a pass, and the puck goes the other way for Colorado, becomes a 2-on-1, and it's Eric Johnson putting one by Martin Jones to tie the game up at 1, and then not that long later, another odd man rush for Colorado, and it's Gabriel Landeskog sniping one past Martin Jones, definitely one hit he would want back, but this is also an absolute snipe. Makes it two to one, Colorado. Flyers then eventually take a penalty, and then Colorado wastes no time to score on that. It is Alex Newhook with a shot from the slot. One timer makes it three to one. Not that long after, Flyers take another penalty, and then that play by Kamal Carr going end to end, beating Ivan Provorov one on one, making it a four to one game. And Provorov just had, just had a brutal game. Bro, Provorov, I have no idea what the hell is wrong with him. I'm not sure if it's just like he was fine at the beginning of the season, but just as. It's, it's Provorov. I just don't know what to say because you expect him right now to be taking that next step in his development, that next step to where he can be, and he's just not doing it. It feels like year after year after year, he's consistently relying on needing a defensive partner to play with him, like a consistent guy. He Ever since Matt Niskanen, it's basically like, okay, where's my other guy to replace? Like, where's this guy that I need I need another Matt Niskanen to play with me at this point? And I'm not saying Provorov is a terrible defenseman at this point. Like, you would just wish he would take that next step to become a true number one defenseman because right now he's relying way too much on having a, you know, a number, a top four partner, a, a just a, a number two, a number one, number two partner with him. And that's something that's really hindering his game, and it's really showing it right now. He just has not taken that next step, and right now he is struggling along with the rest of the team. So that goal happens by McCarr. Mike Yo uses a timeout. That's the first time at all this season that the Flyers actually called a timeout. Basically, everything was spiraling out of control at that point. He calls a timeout. Flyers go back down the ice. It's Oscar Lindblom getting his first goal of the season from a nice pass from Travis Konechny making it a 4-2 to two game. And then the Flyers get a power play late in the period. Claude Giroux, nice one T, another nice pass from Travis Konechny, makes it a 4-3 to three game going into the intermission. So Claude Giroux stepped up this period. As you know, a lot of people today were saying strip the C. It's Claude Giroux was the issue with this team. You know, Claude Giroux also said before the game as well, like they need to come out and make a statement. And Claude Drew made a statement himself, man. He scored two goals in this period. Like, he is not the issue. Everyone wants to say he's the issue, but he is, continues to showcase he is not the issue with this goddamn team. And I don't understand why people try to make that argument consistently. So, yeah, that happened. But, you know, the second period, you go into it. And, honestly, only one goal. Very early one by a Nachushkin. Turnover in the in the defensive zone for the Flyers goes in the back of the net. This is a puck that El not not Elliot freaking Martin Jones. I'm having flashbacks at this point. God damn, Jesus! It's, it's been a long two years with this goddamn team. Okay, folks, <laughs> this is one Martin Jones definitely needs to stop. It goes off the post and behind him and in. Makes it a 5-3 to three game. Flyers had their chances, but I would say Colorado was definitely the more better team in this period. So nothing really happens there. You go into the third period, you get the early goal. And also, Cam Atkinson, during this game, he took a block shot, and he started the wince coming off the ice. And he really wasn't there for majority of that second period. So he came, comes back out in the third period, he gets a goal. He pots in a nice pass from, from Kevin Hayes, goes off of one of the Colorado sticks as well. He manages to tap it in, makes it a 5-4 to four game. Okay, coming to this third period early on, you make it a one-goal game, but then everything, you know, just goes south from there once again. Flyers take a penalty, definitely something that you don't want to take when you make it a one-goal game, and it's Nazem Kadri. Actually, the Flyers take two penalties during this situation. So Colorado, they're on their ensuing power play. There's 20 seconds left, and Scott Lawton versus Kale McCarr. Uh, he kind of hooks him a little bit, makes him go down, ref calls a penalty, becomes a 5-on-3 for 20 seconds, and Nazem Kadri does his thing, and he proofs one past Martin Jones, probably another one that he would want back, makes it a 6-4 a ball 
ball game. My goodness, I am all over the place today. <laughs> it's been a long day. It's definitely been a long day from the Elaine Vigneault hiring to tonight. Definitely been a long day. So then, not that long after, after the other power play expires for Colorado, it is Tyson Jost making it a 7-4 to game. And then the uh, Colorado to get a late power play in this game. Scott Lawton gets a goal shorthanded in garbage time on a breakaway, making it 7-5, to and that's how your game ends right there. Uh, shots on goal in this game. Colorado with 50. 50 shots on goal. Yes, that basically showcased how poorly defensively the Flyers were playing in this game. Flyers with 32 shots. Flyers led in faceoff percentage, 54%. Flyers went 1 for 3 on the power play. Colorado went 3 for 5. Hits in this game, very physical, 29 to 21 in favor of the Flyers. 17 blocks for Colorado, 13 for Flyers. And the Flyers had 16 giveaways in this game. Shot discrepancy for each period. In the first period, 14 to 8 in favor of Colorado. 17 to 13 in the second in favor of Colorado. And 19 to 11 in the third period in favor of Colorado. Ah, my God. So, nine losses in a row. Right now, just... In the press conference, basically, a lot of the questions were in regards to, you know, re like it, more in sort for the players, like reaction to the loss of Elaine Vigneault. Well, the firing of Elaine Vigneault, I don't know why I made it sound like he died. I don't know why I made it sound like that. Like, like I said, it's been a long day, but still. Basically, a lot of the questions were referring towards that. The players were putting more of the blame on themselves, like we're the reason why this happened. Like, it's basically a wake-up call at this point. We need to be better. We need to be better defensively, just overall. As a team, we need to be better. We know we can be better. Kevin Hayes was saying the same thing. We have a lot of good players on this team. We know we can be better, and we have to be better. And he was definitely hurt a lot because a l he's gone through a lot of crap this year, man. He has Kevin Hayes, loss of his brother, all the two surgeries that he's had to go through, and now basically a coach that he's spent his entire career with got fired. So, and he he's had a rough year. He definitely has on a on a personal standpoint. So. And then Mike Yo talking about during the press conference, you know, like when when a head coach and an assistant coach get fired the morning of a game, you really don't have time to, you know, practice a system, imply something, and then, you know, get everything in, in shape. Basically, it's talking to individual players, having individual meetings, saying we're going to do this, we're going to try this out, putting Limblom on the first line. He was happy Limblom was able to finally get the monkey off his back with that first goal. Talking about Morgan Frost as well, so... I think they're event they eventually will get a win. Is is this a, is this game a step in the right direction? No, because they're playing poorly defensively. Because right now the past couple of games it's been, you know, a replication of last year. Poor defense, bad goaltending and oh, this time you were able to pot some goals in there, but your defense just wasn't able to handle it. So turns into a ninth loss in a row for this team and now you have to go on a three-game road trip. For the end of this week, you got Wednesday in New Jersey, which I'm going to go to that game with my father. Oh, God, that's going to be fun. Uh, you got Friday in Vegas, and you got Saturday in Arizona. Do the Flyers get a win in any of those games? I would hope so. Jer New Jersey, they we lost to them last week. I know the Flyers are definitely going to want some type of revenge versus them, but I have no idea if that's going to happen or not. New Jersey's going through their own struggles of their own. Friday against Vegas, I don't see that as a win. Arizona... It should be a win because Arizona is more putrid than this team is. But the, with the way this team is playing right now, I, I can see Arizona beating us. So it's a uh, schedule doesn't, even though the schedule kind of does get easier because you're not playing Tampa Bay consistently anymore. You're not playing Florida consistently anymore, Boston. But still, with the way you're playing, every game is going to be a tough game at this point. And your record after this loss, it becomes 8-11-4. You have 20 points still on the season. And... It, it, it's the same stuff every game. I mean, I, I don't know what else to say <laughs> at this point. It, it's like, it's hard to get mad. Like, I do like the response from some of the players tonight, especially from Claude Giroux. Like, he doing his thing. That's basically all he's doing. And, like, what he's been doing for this entire franchise for the past decade, trying to carry the entire team on his back. That's basically all it's been at this point, Claude Giroux. And people still want to complain about him, which I, I just don't understand why. But still. Regardless of that, it was a tough day, very frustrating day. Eh, hopefully, they find a way just to get a win so we can finally talk about a win. But yeah, still, thank you to uh, Jamie Bascal for the opportunity once again 
to uh, cover this game. I think I'm, I'm covering a game, the, the uh, home game next week against the Devils as well. So not that long later, we'll I'll be at the uh, game in the press box next week. So definitely thank Jamie Pascal, Flyers Nitty Gritty for all the uh, help they've been in, you know, allowing me to you know, go to these games and all the other people they have allowed to go to these games as well. Their links are going to be down in the description below. So definitely go check those out. And just what are your thoughts on this game, everyone? What are your thoughts on the streak? Do you think the Flyers are going to win a game? How much longer do you think it's going to take? And just overall thoughts with Mike Yo at the, as the interim. Do you think the Flyers are going to hire a head coach in the near future? Or do you think they're going to you know stay the course and keep Mike Yo as the guy for the time being? So leave those thoughts and, and opinions down in the comment section below. I'll definitely check those out. Do not, so also, don't forget to drop a like on this video. Do not forget to check out the Painted Lines, which I'm a part of. The links are down in the description below. Also, don't forget to check out the links to Flyers Nitty Gritty. Broads Media, the Florida Pod merch website, all that stuff is down in the description below. And like I said at the beginning of the video, the most important thing you can do is hit that sub button. I'll greatly appreciate that, and I will see you next time.